Hi, this is Rachel from Gentle Frog. In today's video of custom QuickBooks training, I want to talk to you about getting started using your QuickBooks. This is not getting started setting up your QuickBooks, but rather you suddenly find yourself in the position where you're your own bookkeeper and you have stuff in QuickBooks, but you don't really know where to get started and you don't really know what's been going on. I just want to give you a very brief overview of, of where to get started, where to find stuff, and loosely what you should be doing. So first thing you've got is your dashboard. You know, take a look at it click on things, get to know it. I'm really not gonna spend any time on the dashboard for this video. The way that I, I work with people and kind of explain like their workflow is I say the first thing you need to do is record your money. You had money in and money out and you, you need to record it. Then you need to double check yourself just in case you did anything, I hate to use the word wrong, but in case you did anything wrong and something got missed or something got duplicated. After that, then I say you should really double check yourself and make sure you put everything into the right buckets or categories. So it definitely can get more complex than this, but I want you to feel confident and like it's going to be okay. And so that's what I'm here to show you. So the first thing is talking about money in and money out. Oftentimes we connect our bank with our QuickBooks providing a one-way sync. So data comes from the bank into QuickBooks and it's sitting and it's just kind of in a, a holding spot for us to process it. So holding or, you know, kind of dormant place in QuickBooks doesn't make a lot of sense. What I try to explain to people is it's kind of like when you, you're doing online shopping uh, and you put stuff in your shopping cart. Um, it's yours and it's almost on its way to you but it's still waiting for you to take that final step. That's what's happening with your banking, is that it's sitting in a place waiting for you to take a final step before it actually gets um, put away and shows up on your financial reports and in your bank register. So there's two ways to get to the, um, the, the section where your dormant stuff lives. You can either, from this dashboard, click on the right-hand side where it says checking, savings, MasterCard, uh, for your accounts, it might say something different, but you can either click on any one of these. Or as an alternative, if you prefer, or if you're not on your dashboard, on the left-hand side, you can click on the text that says banking, followed by banking again. Doesn't matter to me which one you go to. So then what you have is you have a list of your accounts that are connected to QuickBooks. So there's a one-way sync. The bank is saying, Hey QuickBooks, here's some information, here's some information, and it's coming down here in a to-do list for you. You might see a view that looks like this, or if I click this little carrot to the right-hand side, you might see a view that looks like this, and then to toggle between them, you have to click the drop-down. I usually expand it because I'm just used to seeing this, so it's easier for me. Doesn't matter to me how you view your QuickBooks. When you're assigned the task of becoming your own bookkeeper, this is usually where I have you start. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is come down a little bit and click on the word date. And I want the oldest stuff to be on the top. In a perfect world, like in this example, you have 21 things to process. 21 things, no big deal. In the real world, you might have 100 things. And you might get tired of this before you get through all 100 things. If you get the oldest stuff on top, you can kind of work through, you know, say work through December 2019, but then save January 2020 for a different day. If you get the oldest stuff done, then you're kind of, you're always working towards getting caught up. It's much like cleaning your kitchen, where maybe you start with like one cabinet and then work your way to the others instead of picking and pulling from various cabinets and then feeling overwhelmed by the whole process. So what you have in these columns, date, that's the date that stuff shows up on your bank statement. Description, that's the description you see on your bank statement. Payee, that's a column you need to fill in. I recognize that QuickBooks won't force you to fill it in, 
But in Rachel land, if I'm helping you, I'm telling you, you need to fill it in. There's a lot of reasons why you would and almost zero reasons why you wouldn't. The category or match, this is often a very crummy suggestion. So I need you to be the human and say, no, that doesn't make sense. I'd rather see it show up in this other category. The spent and received, this is the bank telling QuickBooks and in effect telling you, here's how much money that was spent out of this account or how much money was received into this account. And then over to the right, this is how you get it out of your to-do list and into your register. So we're going to start with Chin's Gas. If I click anywhere in this gray box, it's going to expand it for me. When it expands, I can see the blank payee box. It's down here where I can put my cursor and I can fill it in. There's a drop down so that I can choose the vendor. If the person that I want to choose isn't on my list, I can click add new and I can add them to my list. This is your vendor list. If it was a deposit, it would be your customer list. You can always scroll if you need to pick one or the other. Okay, so I'm gonna pick Chin's Gas. The second where it says category, this means from your chart of accounts list, why did you spend this money or why did you get this money? So I'm not gonna be overly particular and spend a lot of time explaining this. What I really want you to know is that you're currently working on your checking account so I never, ever, ever want to see you pick checking right here because what you would be saying is money is coming out of my checking account. Money is being spent. Money went to Chin's Gas for the reason of checking. That doesn't make any sense. So never, ever pick the category here that appears up here. Okay. So I want you to think of like just a blank check, like money comes out of checking, pay to the order of Chin's and the reason gas and electric. Any other notes, if you want to put them, feel free. And then when you're satisfied, click add. Clicking add takes it out of your to-do list. It deducts the money from your checking account. Not in real life, it's already been taken out of your checking account. And then it increases the expense on your profit and loss because we chose gas expense. Mm -hmm.